Hello. Um, in this video, I'm going to do another uh, one-dimensional kinematic problem. This one's going to be um, a bit more complicated than the other one on my channel, the car braking one, or the car slowing down. Um, it's going to kind of play off of that. So I have a couple of videos on my channel that are one-dimensional kinematics in the Y direction. One of them is pretty simple, the other one's a little more complicated. And I have, uh, this one is going to be the more complicated X direction onesie kinematic. So if that thing would go away, that would be great. Okay, that notification down at the bottom was kind of annoying. Okay, so for this, let me write down our problem statement. We're going to say a car is traveling down the road at night. It is going uh, 40. This is really fast. That's like 90 miles an hour. Let's not do that. Let's do 28 meters per second. Some arbitrary number. Okay. Um, okay, so the driver notices a deer standing in the road some distance. Some distance in front of him. It takes the driver one second to start to break, and that's due to his reaction time, okay? The car slows down at a rate of mm, 2.7 meters per second squared. Um, what is the minimum Minimum. Oh, why did you turn black? <laughs> and then galaxy. Mini minimum. Minimum um, distance. The um, away from. The spot where the driver noticed the deer, that to the deer can be without the driver hitting it. This is a long problem, or there's at, least, there's at least a lot of words here. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a picture. So I'm going to draw my axes. These are always important. Always draw these. And we're going to have our initial position of our car right here. And our car is traveling along the road at 28 meters per second. Okay? And then let's say right here is when he starts to slow down. And the deer 
Uh, let's use this. That's my deer. It has three antlers. The deer is some distance away. Okay. So the car, I'm going to use a different, different color here. The car begins to slow down right here and where it stops. We want to know, uh, actually, let's say for simplicity's sake, the car stops right in front of the deer. Okay, we want to know the distance that the car traveled from the driver noticing the deer, so back, so up here, all the way to where the car stops. And we want to know the minimum distance the deer could be. So the deer could be way back here if it wanted, but we care about the absolute minimum. Okay, so that kind of gives us an idea of what we are trying to solve for at the end of everything. And this is a multi-part kinematic. So if I zoom in here a little bit, um, the part that I've drawn in pink is part one of our kinematic, and this is part two. Okay? We can't just assume that whatever happens, uh, let's use this, whatever happens here, that's the initial and this is the final. Because if we do that in one part with one like bunch of equations, we completely neglect the part of the scenario where the car is not slowing down. So if we were to just jump from the car notices of the deer to the car stops, we don't include the driver reaction time in our math. And that kind of happens just inadvertently. And this like style of their multiple parts of the kinematic is going to be very handy and you're going to need to use it when you get into 2D kinematics. And if you don't do it in 2D kinematics, you will get questions wrong. So we're going to start here in this 1D but multi-part. So we have part one and we have part two. And because it is the same scenario and just a continuation, all of the initials on this, or all of the finals, I should say, all of the finals in the pink equal the initials in the blue. So the final velocity in the pink, or maybe the acceler or like the distance in the pink, or the time it takes, all of that. Okay? All of that transfers over to part two in the form of the initial values for part two. So we're going to look at the pink part, part one, and we're going to find, because at the end of everything, we want to know distance. So we're going to find the, this distance right here. We're gonna find this distance. And we can do that using kinematics. So for part one of our kinematic, the driver is continuing to drive at 28 meters per second and it takes him one second to slow down. So we know that part part one takes one second and we know that he's not slowing down. So acceleration is zero for part one. Okay, because it takes him that one second to begin to slow down. And we know the initial velocity and we are looking for the distance that part one takes place over. And with all of that in mind, I'm gonna actually write down all three of the formulas for this um, video. Um, and then we're gonna use X for the distance here. Um, Then we have one more vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. Okay, so if we look at these three formulas, for part one, because a is zero, the first equation and the third equation will not work. They won't, they just, they won't work because they're basically telling us that the final velocity equals the initial velocity. Because anything that we look for in this scenario will have 
uh, you know, will be neglected, will, will become zero, because it's going to be multiplied by zero. With the first equation, if we didn't know what time was and we were looking for time, with the acceleration being zero, that whole, that whole uh, number would cancel out. And we are looking for distance, so we would think the third equation is the one to go for, but since a is zero, that whole unit that deals with direction is zero, so that doesn't help us which means we have to use the third equation. And that one is quite a bit longer to use, but because the other ones don't work in this case, we have to use that one. So we have x, f, because that's what we don't know, equals zero. Because our scenario starts where x equals zero. So our initial position is x equals zero. And this becomes plus vi squared, or sorry, not vi squared, vi, so 28 times t, which is 1, plus 1 half a, which is 0, times 1 squared. This whole unit cancels out. So we're left with xf equals 28 meters. And the reason why this one was kind of painless to use is because a was 0. So I'm just going to erase all of this so that I have some room here, and we get xf equals 28 meters. Okay, so that means we're technically halfway done with the problem. So for part two, we don't know the time that it takes, so t equals something. We know acceleration is a, let me scroll back up to the problem here, acceleration is a negative 2.7 because the uh, this line right here the car slows down so 2.7 negative because the velocity is going this way and if it slows down acceleration is going that way and if acceleration is going against velocity acceleration is negative so a is negative 2.7 our vi is 28 because our vf for part one the, uh, I'll do it over here. The F equals 28 meters per second. Since there is no acceleration in part one, velocity does not change. Okay. So that's why the final velocity in part one is 28. And so as the final velocity in part one is 28, the initial velocity in part two is also 28. Okay with me so far. And then we also know that the initial position for part two is at 28 meters because the final position at part one was 28 meters. And we are looking for x f equals zero. At the end of everything that's, or not, sorry, not zero, wow, equals something. But we do know one more thing, and that, that zero actually kind of reminded me of it. We do know what VF equals, and that is zero, because the car slows to a stop. So we know that at the end of everything, the car has stopped. And we are looking for the distance this whole scenario happens. And since we've started um, part two at 28 meters, the distance that happens apart, across part two will naturally include the distance that happened in part one. If we said that xi equaled zero, that would not be the case. So it's super important that we transfer over all of our final numbers. Okay, so if we look at all of our knowns, and the one thing we're looking for we could either use the second equation, so this guy, or we could use the third equation. They'll do the same thing. I'm gonna use the third equation just because it's a little easier and there's less numbers to plug into my calculator. So I get zero squared equals 28 squared plus two times negative, um, negative 2.7 times x, or sorry, delta x, equals x final minus x initial, so this is x final minus 28, okay? Now, 
This is when we start plugging in numbers. So we're going to get 28 squared. Um, 784 equals 2 times negative 2.7 is negative 5.4. But since I moved the 28 squared to the other side, this is technically a negative 784, and this is a negative 5.4 xf minus 28. Okay. I can just turn these into positives. With me so far? That makes sense? So I'm just going to erase all of this. I'm going to erase those two. Next, I'm going to divide out 5.4 and get xf minus 28 equals 784 divided by 5.4 is 1, 145. This oh, so many dots. 145.19 meters. Okay. So if we add 28 to that, let me scroll down. Now we get xf equals basically 173 meters. I did some rounding there, but 173 meters. So that means that the car takes 170 meters from, or from the time that the, from the instant, I'll say, from the instant that the driver notices the deer, in his whole scenario and journey of stopping, he travels 173 meters. Which means that the absolute closest the deer could be to the car without being hit is 173 meters. The deer could be 500 meters away, we don't know, but the absolute minimum that it could be is 173 meters. Which is what we were asked to find. If all of this made sense and you could kind of follow along with the multi-part um, kinematics, then I would say you're probably on the you're probably on the right track to being ready for 2D kinematics. Um, if this is a little confusing to you, I would recommend you know just, ah, just drop my pen. Sorry, I would recommend spending a little more time on kinematics, um, both the regular simple stuff and the 2D. Uh, not 2D, sorry, the multi-part stuff. I hope uh, this helped you some. Uh, if you have any topics you want me to cover in the future, feel free to leave a comment. And thanks for watching.